Hi, how are you today? Thank you for joining us. Are you new to the community or did you attend any of our previous events? If you are new, welcome. You can take a look at previous talks on our website and also watch some of the previous events on demand. Make sure you do it later and not now. Let's focus and enjoy the next one and a half hours together. Today we will take you to Lithuania and Ukraine, where we will talk to Andre Valdesiuto and Oleg Drostov. My name is Fermin Trivaldos and I will be your host today. We are here with you live from Hamburg, Germany. We started this virtual world tour a couple of months ago to celebrate our fifth anniversary. With this event series, we are taking you on a tour around the globe to meet some of the most influential architects of our time and get to know them on a personal level. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, let me briefly introduce our format. At Architects Not Architecture, we do not focus on architectural projects, but on the individuals who designed and built them. We often know the projects and awards of renowned architects, but what we often miss out on are the people behind them. It is them and their unique personal history, which influence how they work and what they create. So we try to bring to the stage what too often remains unseen. Today, our speakers will talk about their career paths, their influences, and the experiences that shaped them and made them become who they are today. And the main rule is, they are not allowed to talk about their own projects. Today's event is kindly supported by Jung and Exerus and Funder Max. It is a huge honor for us to be visiting Lithuania and Ukraine for the first time, at least virtually. This is possible thanks to our two partners who are very active in these two countries. We thank them for their trust in us and our work. We have video messages from them and let me start by passing the mic to Diana from Jung. What do people talk about when Jung and architecture are mentioned in the same sentence? It's about color, shape and style, about materiality, directions, taste and encounter. Since 2006, Jung has been providing a platform for an in-depth discussion of architectural themes and related social issues. Nationally and internationally, a contemporary form of professional exchange has established itself beyond the usual communication structures. The Jung Architecture Talks are not an expert-only format. This regular event program is synonymous with lively discussions about vibrant topics in architecture and with networking taking place in a pleasant atmosphere. So my experience with uh, Young Architecture Talks has gone over almost a 10 year period and I've seen it grow from something that is just very local uh, here in Germany to something that actually draws in a lot of interest also from outside. Uh, it's now an international architecture talk. For three years now, Jung has been supporting all international Architects Not Architecture events in addition to the Jung Architecture Talks. Since we all can't travel as we used to, we are joining the virtual Arna tour around the globe as well where we all can visit selected cities and virtually meet some of their most relevant architects. After all, architecture generally lives from the power of images. So please enjoy. We would also like to mention our media partners, The Architect, Design Boom, Arch Daily, HIS, Architects Association of Lithuania, and SALT. Today we are welcoming our speakers Andre Valdisiute and Oleg Drostov. Each of them will have 30 minutes on our virtual stage, 20 minutes to give a talk, followed by an up to 10 minute interview. After that we are going to have a round of discussion and we look forward to your questions, so make sure you get ready 
and use the box on our website to send in your questions. You will find it on the right side when scrolling down. That's the plan for today, yeah. but before we start, let me pass the mic to our partner Ritis from Exterus. My name is Ritis Nejus and I'm one of the founders and managers of Exterus. Exterus was founded in 1998 and since then is a professional partner in exterior and interior clothing supply. We work with architects, investors and contractors and present them newest cladding materials, ideas and solutions in the Baltic states, Scandinavia and other countries. We work with HPL compact panels of Hondermax for exterior and interior cladding, glass fiber reinforced concrete of Reader, terracotta panels, fiber cement panels, bricks, aluminium composite panels, metals like copper, titanium, zinc, stainless steel, aluminium, also perforated and expanded metal solutions. For interior, our strengths are acoustic cladding for walls and ceilings, metal ceilings and other solutions. In our own CNC workshop, we can make lots of customized solutions to realize non-standard architectural ideas like perforations, carvings and other. Stay with us, Exterus, dedicated to walls. Our first speaker was born in Cholet, Lithuania. She studied architecture in Vilnius, Valencia and Amsterdam. After gaining experience in the Netherlands, she established her own practice under Valdi Architecture Urbanism, now do architects, in 2007. She is also one of the initiators of the educational platform Architecture Fund in Vilnius. Her practice is distinguished by its socially responsible attitude to architecture and the processes of architectural life. Some of her most relevant projects are the Kiteboarding and Windsurfing Center, Ogmio City Public Space, Mo Museum, Family Villa in Giruliai, B Nordic 26, and the Rolling Home Concept. Amazing projects which won't be the topic of her talk today. We are very excited about having her participating. Welcome, Andre Valdis Uten. Um, hello, and uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Fermin, for invitation to this digital event. And uh, I take it a great honor to share my story with all of you. Today, I will try to do my best uh, to translate everything into that digital message. And um, it's a pity that I cannot uh, catch emotion of your faces, but uh, I will try to be somehow involved in a physical interaction and hope uh, to receive uh, spontaneous gestures from you that maybe would uh, allow me uh, to stop um, or just uh, to change my theme, uh, and I hope. And uh, I could start my story. I will share the screen. Uh, you can see uh, the wonderful picture of uh, Lithuanian landscape. And So we cannot see the, the slides, but uh, it will work, I guess. Thank you, Andre. So I hope it, it now works. it works. Perfect. Good, good. So um, in uh, this first slide, I share with you the beautiful landscape um, of Lithuania. Uh, and uh, in Lithuania, I was born in the north, in uh, the city of Shule. We call it the, uh, the translation could uh, originate from the Sun city. And the city is almost 800 years old, but it was strongly destroyed during the World War II. And, uh, you know, growing there as a child, um, 
I do not remember any old city feeling uh, because it was almost newly rebuilt uh, during socialist uh, annexation years into a new social housing type. A uh, city with uh, like free planning structure, with wide streets, with separated functions, with like factory areas, housing areas, shopping areas, like culture school and so on. And, you know, this tragedy of my city was that all historical ties, they were lost in the past city layout. And, uh, you know, I grew up in a 12-story apartment building in a new southern sleeping district in Chile. And uh, not far from our house, there was a big bicycle factory. And uh, during 80s, a lot of bicycles uh, were made there and we had uh, a lot of bicycle paths in Chile and for me as a child it seemed that everybody had a bike there and uh, this cartoon was made uh, the year I was born and it was in the 80s and it was made by my father he was a cartoonist uh, and he was drawing political cartoons and you know this uh, Satire was a resistance to the system, to the political annexation of Lithuania. And in 70s and 80s, youngsters like really were discovering a lot of uh, hidden forms of protests against the system. And, uh, you know, my father's way of protesting against the system was just to draw cartoons. And in this image, you could see like foreign oil companies that at the time existed in the world, but not in Soviet Lithuania. And this satire is also, you know, a bit about labeling a newborn child. Uh, it's some kind of a birth certificate as during 80s and 90s, they started to appear like foreign fruits in a very limited access. And they had their fruit labels. And, uh, uh, you know, you could know from where the fruit is delivered. So if such a fruit label appeared close to you, probably you would never throw that label. And you would try to collect it uh, as a proof of your wealthy life. And uh, my father in 19. 87 decided to organize an international cartoon contest and it was called uh, Velo Cartoon as like Chile was a cyclist city so politically everything was correct and he sent invitations to almost like 30 countries uh, with a call to deliver two cartoons and one cartoon was a bicycle theme and the other was a theme free of your choice. And you know, only after some uh, years, like uh, later, way later, I figured out that what was really encoded into that call to deliver a second cartoon free of choice. Like the main theme was uh, like bicycles and it was politically correct. And it was widely promoted as a bicycle theme. But actually, during that cartoon contest, we always received so many political cartoons with uh, jokes uh, and satire against the system. I remember, like, in 1988, uh, uh, a lot about uh, Gorbachev. And what I really don't remember is uh, these cartoons were exhibited uh, in these years. So probably all these piles are still, you know, in the archives. And uh, as a child, I grew up with piles of parcels and envelopes that were coming from all over the world because these exhibitions my father decided to make, uh, they were held in 1988, 1990, 1992, and 94. So it was almost like a 10 years uh, gap between them. So me as a child, I remember that uh, me with my sister, we had to help my father to sort these piles of parcels. And our job was to cut out uh, the post stamps and to soak these stamps into the water, you know, in order to make them clean from the envelopes. 
and uh, in a year 1987 like we received 300 parcels and you know this involvement into international like affairs like broaden my parents foreign connections outside of soviet ruled republics and uh, everybody in our big neighborhood like knew that we are receiving these foreign parcels and you know like Today, it's such a natural thing, and in the 80s, it was so special somehow. And, uh, you know, that drying process of the stamps and then sorting was uh, uh, some uh, uh, special meditation for me. Like, we were sorting these uh, stamps by countries and by continents. And, you know, like, uh, you find... Uh, post stamp with nature, with flowers, and it's probably coming from like New Zealand, and you see it with the Queen, and it's from Great Britain. And, uh, you know, from time to time, we were like, uh, as kids, we were getting to know geography and the world, and we were matching these stamps of the world map. And um, the world was so big at the time because we didn't travel as kids abroad. And these parcels with envelopes, uh, it was our discovery of that the joy of the journey around the world. And, um, you know, I remember as a child, we had a world map. And suddenly in 90s, this map becomes irrelevant. And uh, the years of 1990s, 1992, when Soviet Union and Yugoslavia uh, collapsed, and uh, it evolved into 20, 25 more different countries with new names. And, you know, probably being uh, a child in that time, I remember very well one thing. And I remember that feeling that you are not in these maps anymore because uh, your status has changed. And uh, there are so many people that do not know who you are and uh, they just do not mention you. And later, this feeling emerged so many times during uh, both my childhood and my study years. And, you know, it's probably some kind of a feeling that you would have if somebody kidnaps you and keeps you isolated in a cell for half of a century. Uh, and, of course, they do not kill you, but uh, you probably see them killing your father, your grandfather, or your uncle. They start to educate you, they give you books, they give you food, and they even try to convince you that they take care of you, but, uh, and, you know, they explain that you have everything, and this is your world, and you should be happy, but they do not allow you to leave that cellar. And uh, outside that cellar, the new generation, totally new generation, emerges that already do doesn't know you, and... Uh, when you finally come out, it takes so much effort and time to come back to that normal. And know probably from 90s up until now, Lithuania as a country were so many times going back to that normal. And it's just, you know, if, if you run a marathon and you have a healthy legs, you just have to train to run faster. But if you have like broken legs, first you have to treat these legs in order to start to train for the marathon. And this goes on and on and on. And my, during my childhood and uh, my youth, there were so many moments that we just were so happy that we are allowed just to participate in that marathon. And... Uh, because we just finally managed to, to treat our leg. And uh, it was so not important that, uh, you know, we just uh, cannot win that marathon. And, you know, this marathon is, of course, a metaphor uh, to explain that feeling I had uh, during my youth. And what was interesting in the town I grew, it was uh, artists... Uh, Reda and Arunas Ogenti. And uh, during uh, my youth life in Shule, uh, they were active performance artists. And uh, they were working uh, for Shule Theatre and building, I remember, colorful decorations uh, 
for um, the theater, Jonut and Jonukas and Gritute, and like doing also a lot of performances. And looking at them, uh, I had no feeling that they are catching up for something. They are so unique, and they manage to live with their almost uh, daily performances, like um, up until today. And uh, during even our lockdown, uh, the um, recent years, when a lot of artists started to feel uh, lost and troubled, like galleries were closed, exhibitions canceled, Reda and Arunas uh, started to film a daily quarantine diary with outstanding performances, like reflecting social, political, or even simply daily life. And, you know, these people uh, who were my idols during my youth years, they also became uh, my friends through their son Ignaz, with whom we started to work together on architecture almost like 15 years ago. So artists Ogenti, they are like masters to celebrate uh, that uh, life. And um, I am sometimes even suspicious that they are even not protesting. They are just living their very honest, uh, colorful life without being afraid uh, that you might look too awkward with like your bright green shoes, shaved head in the center of Chaule. And uh, Chaule is not New York, and it's not Amsterdam, where that would be a charming uh, norm for a famous like, artist. So, you know, finally, Lithuania regained that uh, independence in the uh, 1990s, and we started to build a capitalist country. And uh, this is also a cartoon, a political satire from my father. And uh, for his 55th birthday, some 10 years ago, we were archiving his work and uh, working for the catalog. And I've noticed that uh, he stopped drawing uh, cartoons just after we gained back the independence. And, you know, he just said that, there was no sense anymore as uh, now he said I have just to build my country and to instead of criticize the system and uh, you know uh, these uh, stories uh, they uh, are so present in your childhood that uh, you only start to understand them a bit later and uh, in my parents' uh, stories, uh, then uh, I remember Vilnius as a city was very abandoned. And in the 70s, they didn't go to study there. Instead of that, they went to study in Kaunas. And already in the end of the 90s, uh, uh, me, myself, I went uh, to study architecture in Vilnius. And uh, after the World War, uh, in Vilnius, a lot of buildings, they just were destroyed. The ones that were not uh, fully destroyed uh, by the Germans were thoroughly cleaned up by the Soviets. And uh, a lot of the city was rebuilt in a totally, like, contrary, contrary spatial layout. And uh, this wonderful book, about Vilnius that I bought with me from Chaule to Vilnius uh, was um, made by Vladas Drema, an art historian and art critic. It's called Lost Vilnius. And here he deconstructs uh, the lost past of Vilnius, explains it with a very precise drawings by his own. So in Vilnius, I started as a student and uh, I was very lucky uh, to start architecture with a very bright and modernist teacher, Justyna Bokas. And his very strong and conceptual thinking was uh, always very influential and his wonderful office building from 1979 
in the central part of Vilnius is a, you know, it's a masterpiece of modern architecture in Vilnius. It's at the same time brutal, at the same time conceptual, at the same time yet very soft and delicate, with few right waves like dragging and pushing you in and out of that building. So it has that old specific uh, splendid Baroque of Vilnius and very pure modern expression of its time. So this um, was my first teacher and uh, Another big teacher and a friend of mine is Rolandas Palakas. And as he uh, was my university teacher, I later continued to work with him in his studio. And after we gave uh, architecture classes together for architecture students. And, uh, you know, Rolandas always seeks for so much poetry in all his work. And, uh, he always taught to observe, to observe, and and only then to choose. And, uh, you know, he's the one who said that uh, you always have the right to doubt about your projects. You have the right to question again and again and again, and until you are very confident that this is the very right way that you choose. And also that even if you choose, you still have the right to change your mind for a better project. And, you know, I love this thought that you are allowed to change your mind for a better project. And uh, I'm very thankful to Rolandas uh, for the support also during my later uh, Amsterdam years and Amsterdam studies and all the confidence he showed in me later. So after... Uh, my studies in Lithuania, I started my Amsterdam Academy studies. And, um, you know, I started in Amsterdam with these first two books. And both of them were about uh, America. Uh, one was Delirious New York by Ram Colhas. And the other one was Death and Light of uh, Great American Cities by Jane Jacobs. And... Uh, one was written by a Dutch architect about the evolution of a super powerful cultural center, while the other was written about uh, how cities should be treated and lived in. And you know, living in Amsterdam, you could definitely see as the existence of that Jane Jacobs city in reality. And uh, with my academy teachers, we were analyzing the concepts of these books. We we're talking about experiments, utopias, and new challenges for like architecture. And it was so special because, you know, finally I started to feel that I am training for the marathon, but not healing my broken leg anymore. And uh, of course, like Amsterdam uh, and living in Amsterdam was really intensive study and work life. And uh, uh, at the same time, I'm I was confronted with a lot of funny events. And uh, like uh, when I moved to Amsterdam as a student, I just couldn't find an affordable house to live. So I just had to live in a tent for a while. And it lasted just only a month. And then, you know, I managed to rent a room in an apartment with a very wonderful retired teacher of literature. And then she was bringing me to Sunday concerts in Amsterdam Philharmonic. And uh, these were wonderful, uh, wonderful times. And so, you know, life gave me comfort. And I started to work at One Architecture in Amsterdam for... Matthias Bau and uh, Donald Van Densick at the time, and life was like super busy. And, you know, it was uh, cold November, I had my first project review in the academy, and this was like really stressful time of moving to a new country, like completely alone, and you have to find a house, a job, friends, and so on and so on. And of course, there is never enough time so you have to work overnight so I wake up early then full day in the office then from there I rush back home 
I take my prints and my models of the project. I park my bike to the rail of the bridge and, uh, you know, quickly run upstairs, pick the boxes with concepts, models. And then back, I tie my boxes to the back of my bike. And as I start to move, my projects fell into the canal. And the feeling of that moment was um, just something, you know, different from that I had before. And, you know, the boxes, they quietly start to float in the canal and it's evening, it's cold, it's quiet. And the presentation has to start in 30 minutes and everybody is already there preparing for it. And I just decide to call my teacher. And uh, this is the tricky thing. This is, you know, your first review and nobody really knows how good or bad you are because you are in Amsterdam and your, you know, your failure stories that you dropped your project in the canal, this might sound so absurd. So I call my teacher and tell him that my project fell into the canal and uh, he just quickly said that, don't worry, it's okay, no worries, but you just failed with your project review and you will do it next year. And then, you know, uh, I don't know how the rest happened, I hang the phone, take off my clothes, jump into the canal and reach my project boxes. And the woman from the boat, she just helps me to get out from the water and through the boat uh, house window. And, you know, with half wet clothes and uh, with wet boxes, I cycle to the project review. And, you know, it's not over yet. And I am just allowed to do the presentation. And... Uh, you know, here is that metaphor of that marathon again, that finally, when you are allowed to be in that contest, you should not allow yourself to break that leg again. It's just, you know, unthinkable. And, you know, like in Amsterdam years, they were full of many adventures. And I was working at Karas and Brands with Sylvia Karas and Bart Brands. And then we started to visit Lithuania for a project. And, uh, you know, uh, almost like 60 years uh, passed since my involvement with this uh, beautiful site in the Fianian Kronian Lagoon of Svensela site. And uh, I just uh, started to wonder how it looked uh, like all these years ago before we started. Uh, and, you know, I remember that very fragile landscape and uh, it's uh, interrupted with abandoned remains uh, of uh, huge farms and you know, in my whole career, I have two long-lasting projects, and one of them is Svensel, and the other is that Ogmia city, ex-military area, and uh, that we started uh, uh, to transform from shop into shopping and then into exemplary public space. And, you know, when you see these two sites before your intervention, uh, you see that today Ogmia site, like this site, is brought back to nature way more than it was before. And Swensele is way more urbanized. And, you know, I then remember a story of the hairdresser that refused to cut my hair because it was too long and too beautiful to cut. And probably we, we as architects, you know, just also should try sometimes to do more of, uh, or often. And then I entered to the era of do architects. So, you know, all these projects um, that we started, they successfully merged into our do architects office. And, uh, you know, uh, with uh, this uh, bright team of Gilma, Gilita that I met in Karas and Bronze, and uh, with uh, Sabina, with Algimantas, uh, with Ignas and the others, we like really share a lot of common things and uh, yeah, there's still a lot uh, more to go. And uh, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. If you stop your screen sharing, I will see you in full screen mode. Thank you a lot. Um, it was it was wonderful to see uh, your upbringing. Um, I think that this, as you mentioned, it would be nice to see emotions. Uh, it will. It was like this. <laughs> it's, it's it a was, pity I didn't. It's a pity I did. Yeah. It was uh, fascinating. It was wonderful to see that. Um, and there are so many um, 
possible topics to discuss. Um, now you're part of the marathon, right? I are, are you enjoying? Are you enjoying being part of the marathon, or do you think maybe I will do a half marathon, or maybe I'm going to I'm going for a triathlon? There are various thoughts always, you know, and uh, um, yeah, the most difficult thing probably is just to, to start. And um, I would say that uh, as um, as uh, like uh, you didn't see the end of my full presentation. So, <laughs> so <laughs> what was coming? What was coming? Next time. Next time. Next time. So uh, like uh, for the. For the in-person event, for the in-person event. Yeah, so for the other event, uh, you know, now I enjoy not only the marathon, I enjoy a lot of small personal things uh, that are not less important, you know, for your life than your big ambitions. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably you have a decades when you learn, when you uh, go in full power and well, when you enjoy. So I am kind of coming to that decade when I enjoy, like, you know, that... Uh, <laughs> my life <laughs> with with everything you have uh you have gone through uh what kind of tips or recommendations do you have for your kids for the next generation or for the young generation of architects oh you know um i think uh, my kids uh, will give me tr t like tips and they will be totally different, and now they are different, and there will be something uh, out of, of uh, that difference, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, probably just do what you, what you want to do. It's uh, very mm. important what gives you just uh, happiness. Yeah. Mm. Um, at the beginning of your presentation, you, uh, you showed some pictures of um, Cholet, um, and the historical city which, which was destroyed. How do you think this um, this feeling of growing up there um, influenced you as an architect later? Uh, you know, um, like in Chile, I was um, probably growing as a person, as a as an independent person, mm -hmm. and uh, later, like Vilnius, probably and Amsterdam, they formed me more as an architect. Mm -hmm. But of course, I had my um, wonderful parents close to me, and uh, all these, you know, values uh, they said to me. But you know, Chole as a city, I don't remember as an architectural city. Mm -hmm. uh, probably it never, it never was such a city. Yeah, just mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. It was also interesting to see the, the, the book about Vilnius, about the, the former Vilnius. Um, it's a very thick book, very, very thick book. <laughs> I can imagine that. It's a big and thick book, yeah. <laughs> it's super exciting. Um, there is maybe one topic, um, one last question, because so, um, we are over the time. Um, you mentioned during our previous conversation that you, that you, um, you took a year break twice. With your your husband, for and and you traveled with yours with him or you with your kids. How does that help to organize your thoughts? And uh, how do you find your uh, find time for yourself in your everyday life? We cannot do that. That would be great if we can do it tomorrow. But sometimes, uh, <laughs> I guess you need to reflect and reflect and clear up your mind and your. Um, normal everyday life everyday life yeah 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 you know just uh, i really love to go with uh, my family and with my kids to unknown places and uh, you know they allow you to be in that uh, very close moment during your trips and uh, you know you are encountered with them in so many various feelings like uh, with both positive that or distractive or joyful or even sometimes painful and mm -hmm. like you become their feeling their feelings become you and you know i have that luxury to be with them all the time 
because during your daily life you do not have that luxury and you know I have I really love that luxury like to observe them to learn from them like you just uh, learn from from your kids what people say they want and what they really want and there is a difference always and, <laughs> and they teach you that simple thing yeah because mm. it's still so obvious and uncovered in them yeah and um, now with your routine, as so with uh, going to the office every day, or actually at least before COVID, um, in your everyday life, how do you try to find time for yourself? You just go there out. There is no time. <laughs> <laughs> you just go out. <laughs> you just go out and close the door. <laughs> Yeah. It's a good uh, strategy, yes. I mean, <laughs> if you want to find time, you just have to find that time. And, uh, <laughs> mm. yeah. That's a good, uh, a good way to do it. Andre, thank you for the, for the presentation. It was wonderful. Now we are going ahead with, uh, with Oleg. So we will see each other in about 30 minutes for the roundtable discussion. Thank you, Terry. Thank you a lot. It thank was you. wonderful. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Our second speaker was born in Volgodonsk, Russia. He studied architecture at the Kharkiv University of Civil Engineering. In 1997, he established Drostov & Partners Architectural Practice. The office works on a global scale in countries like South Korea, France, Switzerland, the USA, Spain and Kuwait, and embraces the philosophy of critical artistic pragmatism. Some of his award-winning projects include Ave Plaza, House with a Peristyle, Arc, Water Patio, and the VG Horse Club and the Dental Clinic, which were recently nominated for the Mies Awards. He has curated Ukrainian projects at the Rotterdam Biennale of Architecture 2005 and the Moscow Biennale of Architecture 2012. In 2017, he founded Kharkiv School of Architecture, the first private architectural school in Ukraine. We are very honored to have him with us today. Welcome, Oleg Drostov. Hello, everyone. Thank you for yeah, coming to um, that event and very much um, a big thanks for invitation in such kind of um, event. Uh, it's some um, kind of uh, um, a beautiful possibility to talk with you, but uh, and with a difficulty, I would not not see this uh, auditorium and all, all faces around. And but I will try my best, maybe. Yeah, look at um, at, uh, at 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 some some space with a, a lot of. Uh, 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 creatures and smiles and faces uh, from it. Uh, okay, I will try to switch uh, on and back to the pictures. Look at this. And some, sorry, a few seconds. It's um, before it looked like I'm ready, ready, but not now. Mm. Okay, don't worry. It will work. Take your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Now it's working. That's great. Yeah. Um, should I start right now? Yes, you can go ahead. Okay. Yeah, this is like um, if I if I try to excavate my my memories. Uh, uh, first thing that is, I don't know why, much more important than the parents. It was like a, a, a big river. It's, um, I was born in around a big river. And this, uh, this river, um, I don't know, always my, my, my most common reference for everything. But I'm, I'm not every, every time pronounce it, but I'm, I always, I don't know, feel this, this river. 
and 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 my origin came from from um, a quite ambitious idea to 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 make uh, to build a new chemical a factory and chemical research institution in the middle of nowhere and, and this place um, uh, where in near uh, River Don, small small town was founded um, a little bit before, but but this was like a decision um, of, of 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 May to develop new new town around new industrial area, and this was like a, some kind of utopia. And all my wife I spent in utopias, and this is, was like a quite. Um, comfortable with other series of, of this kind of um, uh, exercise to be, to live, to participate in, in quite experimental type of life. And two young professional scientists, chemistry scientists, And if I, I'm trying to find um, my, my, my first uh, feelings of, of, of the space and, and maybe not, not just space, something more architecture, uh, maybe tectonics. And this is, was like a two things going to, to my memory. More and more, one, one um, belonged to infrastructure, and this is Volga Don Canal. In, um, Oh, I didn't discover it is an English word for that, but in in in, in Russian and in, in German it have to be in Dutch uh, Schluss. Yeah, and it's something which which helps to 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 uh, to organize uh, difference between uh, between the spaces. And second one, it's not really uh, some some minaret of uh, Pabeda uh, monument and tribune for manifestation and very Soviet type of typology. And also, it's it's more more close to just a simple courtyard. I do remember I was so much um, experience but to be in in inner space and i do remember but this is a courtyard somewhere behind there's a woman and there's a there's a um, um, shop for windows uh, and, and some little bit uh, further to, to that and 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 second uh, maybe, um, yeah, also uh, some kind of space formed me and uh, um, helped me to, to, to understood priority. It was like a step. This, all this landscape around was quite flat and, 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 and it was like a, Semi desert, semi a little bit, um, I don't know, quite, um, quite very, very uh, uh, special one which, which becoming uh, uh, absolutely white in the middle of the summer and absolutely flat with the open gory horizon. And this is horizon I, I, I back to that in my my feelings and this is my priority of empty space and and something and silence it was four years and I'm back in year in year to this uh, some kind of environment and I'm looking again again to this it was like a phantomic um, movement of, of my of, of, of my brain to, to this kind of space. What I'm, uh, yeah, one of the f um, passion of whole of my life was some kind of infrastructure. Because in, if you live in, in this empty space with a horizon, it's always interesting something which, which could be connected to you to modernity, to, I don't know, some kind of avant-garde, to, to um, infrastructure which 
something about you, but you cannot reach right now. But you, you, your next, I don't know, steps could be introduced. What this thinks about, and I, I, and I'm back and back and in some kind of to these uh, feelings. I, I'm traveling a lot during my. Uh, my, my students' time in in, in Soviet Union uh, in this um, like political formation when I spent quite quite big time of my life and this is, was like an emptiness and some kind of infra infrastructure and this kind of infrastructure not very reacted to the my, my life. I, I didn't know what exactly this infrastructure served on, and this is, was like uh, some kind of moment. And and this is um, all, all my life I spent in some kind of narrative which completely doesn't connect, it, and maybe will be connected in in, in some final <laughs> phase of my understanding. And this was like uh, some kind of uh, competition. My my father. Um, uh, spent a lot of time for um, for developing uh, a new laboratorium. I don't know, new research institution in uh, German um, Democratic Republic, and he brought with with from like um, I don't know, it was uh, some some books in time to time. And this is a uh, half like um, some kind of icon uh, of 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 erotic uh, in my home, and 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 landscape and and other kind of completely undiscovered type of feelings of 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 spaces. Some some uh, from uh, Jan van Eyck um, type of. Uh, of urban space which doesn't exist in around me and this is, was like a, a, some kind of relation between uh, inner and I don't know semi-private uh, and some far space but everything was urbanized and I was so so extremely um, fascinating by by this kind of imagination how it could be and this is uh, something image and, and this happened in in the end of 80s i got a book with a, um, with a, with a, uh, uh, some example of abstract abstract art and this is like uh, so much and I, I do remember this uh, um and paintings of so Sony Delaunay, which I'm, which I um, uh, recopy on 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 wall of my my room, and this is was like it was a, uh, I was like a 14 years old, and this was like a very important action, what I did in 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 in. In this my childhood wife, and this is like a, was a, a very um, a very friendly. Met my my parents, and this is, was like a family decision that I could do that. And um, yeah, and 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 finally, I I um, arrived and start to. Uh, my my educational yeah my studies in in Harkov. this is like a, a super special city that um, it's it's place there uh, a few utopia utopias realized and and you you see uh, and uh, some early early photo pictures of uh, the Sprom building is it's, it's building uh, um, one of um, uh, part of the uh, complex of new central square, which uh, uh, was built um, after um, it is a, as a result of, of competition, and this is have to be had to be a new new center of new capital Ukrainian. Soviet Republic, and and this is, was like a, 
moment than a lot of ideas to um, uh, land it in, on, on, one, on one place, and this is city uh, realized uh, all utopias of beginning of 20th century as a, as a, as a new type of uh, avant-garde cultures, and this is uh, um, um, yeah. Theater, uh, theater of Brazil in architecture and art and theater and, and all kind of um, uh, mass performance and also this city famous by by competition for uh, for um, mass um, uh, theater uh, um, uh, theater of mass performance. There participate Mars Breuer, uh, Gropius. Uh, um, won this uh, competition uh, with Neil Brother, but this, this was one some kind of booming uh, place of booming ideas, and 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 modernity realized in whole body. Maybe it was like a, some epicenters where this uh, happened, and also we, um, I want to mention also a huge district there uh, this already in in the beginning. And this all these um, um, companies, and all right. but the same case, yeah. This is um, uh, this is kind of architecture. This kind of an, an environment becoming little bit forbidden in, in 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 my time when I came to the city in the end of twenties. And our utopia uh, came to the this first page of Rarantad, and this is uh, uh, it's it's uh, mass prefabricated houses. It's uh, in this district in the city called uh, South of Ka, and and this is it was very crucial moment than uh, three hundred fifty thousand people. Uh, got a, a social lift and 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 have I don't know quite comfortable in that time environment to have some kind of in, employment and this is um, and this is was quite a temporary qualities that they get but but in general it it was like an enormous. Um, moment then your uh, quality of your life changes and and we could expect it uh, this kind of um, frame and I don't know pressure of political system and, and I don't know some kind of circumstances format lifestyle of these people but for some a very short moment without reflection that they get uh, in in this uh, in this um, displacement or this uh, new 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 era new environment and new places in your apartment this is was like a very very short moment than when people feel yourself um, i don't know something yeah, in a new level of happiness, new new improvement they feel. And 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 my some study environment was uh, so limited and a frame was uh, so tiny and in and, and, and whole information what we get it was like a not not a school library or city library and everything if you need to 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 have for your um, for your study for your uh, for your um, uh, understanding of of profession was like a just uh, maybe three magazines which quite little bit independent and this was like a technical aesthetic, a technical aesthetics. It was very formal type of of of, of uh, publishing. And this is, was like a was a like not uh, not real theory. It was like a mostly um, a performing uh, 
um, some kind of theory. It, it, it was like a, like a, um, um, more um, quite artificial type of feeling, but not real feeling. But uh, some kind of source which we are interested on, on this is a Polish uh, uh, magazine project which which combine uh, quite uh, a lot of um, in, in information and, and publication from different field from from theater from graphic design from from um, industrial design, a little bit in you know, architecture. But this is, was like a, some kind of a source where we also studied what happened in, 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 in our land in 20s. So if this is kind of, they introduced us of modernity, of constructivism and, and um, um, abstract art of, by, by by Lisitsky and Malevich. A most favorite magazine at that time was like Architecture d'aujourd'hui, which uh, this is like an issue, um, front page of issue from 1970, but uh, in, in, in beginning of 80s, it was like, it was like a photocopy. It was like a black and white without advertiser, some kind of, um, it's, it's like a Soviet form digest after uh, after very strong preparation with a very bad quality and not not much uh, from my colleagues and students time understood what what really is um, uh, um, uh, this um, content of this movie but we, we, we dive to the, some alternative uh, art and uh, alternative, I don't know, type of thinking. The best thing what I, what I got it, 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 during this time, it, it's some kind of commune of life. It's, it's, it's very strong discussion about everything, about politics. And we are becoming more and more informal in, in, in song of six pistols which uh, uh, with, uh, with the words um, no future for you this is was like a type of our environment of our, our present and future and 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 we um, it is a, it's it's one of the pictures from part of Tarkovsky uh, scene from from Tarkovsky movie and this is was like a part of love life it, it was like a, one of not forbidden uh type of art which was possible to, to see. And I, I also participated in, in very crazy um, during this uh, Cold War, last phase of Cold War military service, and which I am tried to look at, at everything happening around me for all these uh, <clears throat> optics when I, when I get before this critical optics, and this is some kind of uh, military exercise. And happened it, uh, uh, something which, which absolutely changed my, my mentality, and I'm, uh, become involved in a in much bigger process than uh, there's a new new movement which mostly came from 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 uh, uh, Rotterdam and 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 London I, I mean uh, uh, these early Zaha Hadid projects and 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 Ram Kohas um, uh, OMA of our projects, they meet our, our backgrounds, our part of our underground life. It's, it's <clears throat> abstraction of, of um, Soviet 20s and 30s. Yeah, but it, it was like a quite difficult during uh, this uh, next decade after independence of Ukraine and collapse of Soviet Union to find place for um, for myself for for I don't know for for some kind of action and uh, I, I spent a lot of um, 
time to to develop my artistic career but when i'm i'm, I'm uh open at my architectural practice main main topic when i when i focus on it was like uh, reaction on on it is a closet uh um environment in in to 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 try to be um exhibitionist to try to relate it as uh, spaces this is was like a quite important and and rooted issue of our practice and we try to relate it uh inner uh, space and environment, garden and house, uh, um, um, I don't know, some, uh, some commercial spaces in the street and we spend this at first decade. And our education was like much more from, from doing. And second, uh, um, an important uh, issue that I'm focused on it's it's like uh, it's a relation between um, between geology and 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 the city way of the thinking because globality quite mu uh, very much against it and 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 I could mention uh, two most important books which which About layer or references if, and if you can, or, Oleg, if you can repeat it because we lost uh, your connection for five seconds. You mentioned the two books and uh, yeah, what? It's yeah, by Vladimir Abokov, Ada and Arbor, and a Sal by by Mayor Shalev. And these two books. At, uh, Keep this this a feeling what 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 uh, some kind of circumstances what happened or some cultural background and some uh, patterns of identity it's always formed you and 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 they they form it your future and this is quite important and this is um, um, kept me uh, to. Understand never layer against uh, other one. It's always uh, play together. They they form our futures, and, and this is like a, and, and what I'm very interested on. It's it's uh, between um, uh, connections between a future and now or and and. Uh, and, and 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 past, and I could say my life completely changes during this uh, kind of political transformation. What happened in nineteen uh, in twenty fourteen in Ukraine, and this is becoming uh, completely to revision of our social structure. And uh, during that time, it's like a reaction to the new new political situation in new needs was like our our project but also re reaction was so completely different and we was like a part of of um uh, russian uh um uh, bots attacks and this is, was like a completely a new new experience and uh, and this is all all these memes came from 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 this and i i, I want to um like uh, summarize uh my my life experience and and most important top i um uh, part of my life i met in in this last um, three four years in development of new school of architecture and this is much more about um, um, taking that, that giving. And this is like a fantastic opportunity and, and fantastic environment to be um, to be um, as a, as an architect, as a person uh, to be involved in. And this is. Uh, 
uh, and I, I think uh, uh, some uh, like a school uh, forum, school school environment is one of the most uh, important um, feeling or, or um, environment there we existing. On. Thank you so much. And, um, Thank you right. a lot, Oleg. Back, back to, to the uh, Thank auditorium. You. <laughs> yes. See uh, Fermin. This is the auditorium. And after be in, in some kind of... Uh, yeah. We have many um, people in the audience and also many people will watch it later. So we invite everyone to send uh, an email to us with a feedback to the speakers. That's always very great to have so that you, we can send it to you, at least something from the audience. Um, Oleg, you just mentioned the, the, how the political transformation of Ukraine influenced you, um, and also as an architect. And um, since 2017, you started this, this new um, architecture university. For people who have who haven't experienced this transformation um, for younger generations? How can we trans transmit? How we can how we can we pass these learnings from that period to the new generations, new generation of architects? Um, yeah, we have some kind of problem because it was like a, some kind of interaction, be, interruption between um, between uh, oldest generation and our generation, and this is. But we have to to create some kind of heritage. I don't know some hand by hand uh, estafette to to the. Uh, because our environment is so rich uh, and so beautiful, and we not really uh, discover it a lot of um, mm. shapes and uh, and um, yeah and, and 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 many formations and many phases of, of this. And to be I don't know to be sensitive is is quite important. And 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 be sensitive in sense of um, and sense of because everything that happened it uh, it's always have some con controversial contradictions and and this is to try to clean important things and propaganda and um, some personalities um, mm. honest. Being artificial things and, and this is it's, it's, it's quite important because it's it's more like a, some kind of Japanese way their modernity not not against tradition we have to mm -hmm. to, to work uh, with with these issues um, much carefully mm -hmm. that's a huge challenge um, and being more specific for the university, what, what, what needs were you trying to satisfy by creating the new architecture university? Um, yeah, we have yeah, quite quite big deficit because all our nations a little bit go west. But, uh, and this is means that new wave of immigration, new, I don't know, some mm. kind uh, quite um, very very fragile identity how, mm. how we could find ourselves and realize ourselves right right here how we mm. could change life around you not not look for not uh, to be um, uh, um, client of other kind of um, um, cultures and economies and this is Maybe biggest challenge. What what do we get during this school mm. development? We more and more integrated during last um, decade to the uh, global society. It's by not not by 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 by, by some kind of um, 
um, not, not not only technological evolution, and also some like a male development that's mm -hmm. already um, mm -hmm. went in our ways. And this is uh, becoming a much, much bigger competition between uh, these uh, like uh, uh, provinces of, of this um, westward uh, and westward. And mm -hmm. this, and we, we, we quite um, um, try to find this balance. Uh, between integration and accumulation of our energies and people and mm. thoughts and, and something like that. But, but it's still um, we quite, quite deep in this kind of competition. Mm. That's, a, um, that's a very interesting point and actually also might be something uh, for the conversation with, with Andre later. Sure. This, such huge influences and topics for both of you. Um, I have one question for you from the audience. We talk about traveling um, and you are a passionate traveler. Uh, the question from the audience is, from the audience is uh, what is your travel style and what do you like to do when you visit a new city? Um, it's it's it, I'm, I'm, I'm never do um, like uh, some like a good circle or something I'm, I'm try to to uh, to um, hold uh, my my I don't know some uh, radar and I, I'm, I'm, I could now your your connection is gone. Um, uh, we, yeah, we lost, I'm, I'm very, we lost your connection for we, we lost your connection for five seconds. You were oh, saying okay. about the radar. I'm just, yeah, usually I'm turn on my my radar and and, and I'm try to feel city, and I'm interesting mm -hmm. on some kind of contradiction which city has between some kind of favelas, how it looks border and and some yeah luxury type of thinking and, and I'm, I'm, I'm always between a, a problem and exhibit city and, and and I could say during the travel I travel a lot uh, by 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 work by my architectural uh, practice mm -hmm. and, and 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 this is most important uh, parts of um, or most influent part of uh, of this my travel it's some kind of other ones and I could mention it's, it was like a project in Korea Kuwait and California this completely uh, helped, helped me uh, understood my identity my mm -hmm. quality of my landscape my space mm -hmm. my um, my environment and this is, was like a real challenges what uh, helped a lot to to find uh, for me myself i could say so uh to ask andre to turn on the camera and the microphone so that we can start the conversation together andre yeah, thank, yeah, you yeah, thank you for joining us so, so nice, nice to see you both, both. um first Again, thank you for, for the wonderful talks. Um, it is super interesting to, to hear you and uh, see what is important for you and what shaped you as an, as an architect. Uh, you both mentioned history, heritage, um, the political transformation. How can we use that at the most motivation as a motivation for architecture. Andrew, would you like to start? You know, um, probably architecture always reflects uh, the politics, uh, and uh, it should actually do <laughs> because you can, yeah, and. Um, yeah, and um, so uh, back uh, in, uh, in in 
in time, like all these uh, uh, totalitarian regimes or monarchy, they also uh, influenced architecture uh, in cities in such a huge way uh, that we see this outcome today. And um, probably, you know, it's such a long process, uh, architecture, that it's not possible that it will sustain just by itself as a piece of art. Mm. And uh, you know, it's always a reaction to the political steam. It's always a re people live because of that politics. Yeah, yeah sure. I could continue a little bit. Uh, there's a there's a wave um, coming from under it, and I could say architecture as as a good movie. It's not always leisure. It's 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 always drama. It's uh, always deepness. It's always I don't know some kind of reality, but reflected by some very uh, artistic way and and, and uh, we a truth uh, in everything we could focus on it but but also uh, always remember about um, dreams which which was uh, part of these uh, some kind of drama or, or, or brought mm -hmm. uh, the, the all this in, in environment to the drama and, and this is quite important because um, it's uh, architecture. It's always about dreams. Yeah, and this is mm -hmm. uh, but some kind of dreams, passion, and uh, and and some somehow or, uh, some would be un yeah, I don't know unhuman. Yeah, but but this is like a, we could in define these uh, waves of of. of of, of which uh, formed this environment and this is quite uh, fabulous quite quite uh, fantastic interesting um, investigation what we're always doing during i don't know our lives during mm -hmm. uh, holidays during our, our working uh, i don't know part of the, our life if you you say uh, so, architecture is about dreaming, and um, if you if you continue dreaming, um, what is that? What you are most excited excited about the future of the architecture? Um, what well, yeah? What you are the most excited about? What's coming next? Maybe Oleg, you want to start or? Yeah, yeah, I could say, yeah, it's 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 quite many direction and, and very controversial <laughs> uh, direction I, I could go out. and 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 we have to think about maybe we have to build much less what we did <laughs> in one mm -hmm. case, and uh, and this is uh, quite difficult to serve uh, this uh, kind of building industry which really um, doesn't know for for what they do because mm. it's like architecture as a part of uh, some environmental uh, um, kind of uh, special real estate speculation uh, becoming some kind of alternative for, for whole financial and all kind of crises and, and this is not good yeah and, and we have to be from our i don't know some kind of position to 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 resist on it mm -hmm. another case we, we 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 now live in in huge transformation of of imagination of what environment uh, about and uh we a little bit moving to the um, to more to being that or um, to uh, to be to be our uh, um, owner of some spaces to mm -hmm. being becoming much more important. 
and this is completely uh, changed our uh, this uh, um, imagination of our environment. And Andre, what is your opinion? What are you the most excited excited about what's coming next for architecture? You know, I uh, would like totally agree with Alec that we should be careful of building probably less or with uh, much more care and um, just, uh, yeah, you know, um, if you share like that um, probably a decade that we are sharing um, economy that uh, is so present so, like uh, we are sharing cars we are sharing uh, apartments when we are not there it will probably lead to some new forms and it's already um, somewhere there and it's already starting to be way more ecological than to start using some new technologies in your newly constructed building because you know Every uh, piece of technology, it requires so much an ecological effort. And uh, just if you want to be with nature, if you want to go towards ecology, you just have to use less and build less. And that's, that's simple. And uh, yeah, I really uh, love all these conversions like of uh, the existing, you know, structures. And it just shows you the, the possibility that it is just there. You just have mm. to you know, open that treasure parts and show that to everyone. And, or just sometimes, you know, you just teach people how to use this or that that's behind the corner. And uh, that's wonderful. And I would see like, and we also see uh, this uh, direction of the use existing in also all the awards that uh, are happening in the last years in mm -hmm. And, uh, around the world. So, yeah. There is one question for, uh, from the audience, which um, could be also, I would like to start with Andre for this question from the audience. Uh, and the question is, what took you the longest time to understand about architecture that is really important for you as an architect today? And you, you talk, uh, during your presentation about what shaped your personality and you as an architect in your beginnings? Is there something there that you will say, yeah, that, will, that was key? <laughs> yeah, it uh, took me a long time to understand that uh, not me, but the others for whom you do are much more important in, in these decisions. Because, you know, um, as an architect, so we so many times say that I was not allowed to do this and that and that. But uh, if you start to be in that other side and start to really understand what is the essential uh, needs or dreams of that other side. So it took me quite, uh, quite a lot of time to understand that. Yeah. Mm. And Oleg? What will you yeah. say? Sure, sure. If, if I'm back to to with the reinspection that that happened, for sure it's collaboration. It's, it's like uh, uh, my 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 friends uh, from different countries, uh, from from my city, who who um, introduced me completely a new way of thinking and new, uh, new values. And, and this is, was like a, a very crucial moments of, 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 of crossroads when I'm turning to a um, to new direction uh, after this kind of collaboration. But, it, but this is, was like... A, always then uh, they kept um, some kind of um, um, common responsibility. And this is what's like uh, very important. It was, okay. It looks like we a little bit was firming. We can have our own private conversation now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some, some some other party started already. 
<laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> yeah, but uh, like, you know, like I uh, remember um, education in Vilnius and education in Holland. And somehow from that I, education... Hi, we are back. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It doesn't make sense. It, it, it doesn't matter how many times you try and how many times you test it. It's uh, in the air. It's it, in the air. It happens. It, it happens exactly during the event. Um, sorry, I missed your, your answer uh, to yes. that, to, uh, your answer to your we question. We already right? starting, started a conversation a bit and uh, I was just saying, I like that... Uh, as uh, being an architect in Lithuania, I was taught that you can do architecture on your own. But actually not. <laughs> it's a dialogue. <laughs> it's, not, it's just not possible to do architecture on your own. You just have to know to learn every day and to have that conversation between so many, so many parties. And, yeah. Yeah, and exactly what I what I learned from this uh, current time time because our um, efficiency, um, yeah, went down uh, three times maybe during during, during this uh, period, and I understood how phenomena this is conversation, this is discussion, this is it's number one and second material. Uh, some kind of um, exercise, modeling, and I don't know, and conversation about real stuff. Yeah, mm. maybe two most important uh, elements of our practice. But mm. I, 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 I met a few, few IT um, professionalists, and that said they they improve our efficiency in two times during this uh, installation in, in 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 some particular uh, this in in the units uh, for i have uh, one question for you both uh, architects um your your projects are award winning projects um and now, um, what is? But what is your definition of success? What do you think is success? What should be? Andre, would you like to go first? I don't know. I because don't know. Me, me, this is a typical question for for young architects, I guess, or or small practices like trying to reach what others are reaching but you know like um, you live your life in um, in small uh, like uh, these parts and uh, if you take one project it has uh, so many different periods of successful of failure of uh, correction of success failure and you still don't know where you are and where you maybe you will be like there or you are there or there because uh, architecture stays for so many years mm -hmm. and today to say uh, what is successful architecture is um, so abstract i just don't know i just don't know i just mm -hmm. have my everyday you know experience and uh, like some days are more successful and that that I have that two, is, you know, yeah. I have two 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 options to answer. It's um always some kind of part of success. It's it's like uh, um some kind of um uh, um uh, psychological environment inside of team and this is could be a success if it's some kind of time there is a pleasure with a, with a passion and this is it's it's mm -hmm. not depend from result and this is like a, some kind of a psych 
ecological environment which you create during the process of of doing architecture but second one and had have to be examined by time and this is it's it, this is could be temporary success and we we see a many many project which was was published mm -hmm. in every magazines and every website but becoming um, forgotten uh, in the half year and uh, or being environmentally not friendly and and some kind of going to the um, I don't know some garbage of of uh, of um, I don't know some city's history or I don't know environmental history and but um, one we we could manage it a second we we not <laughs> but you know like um, not only the publishing uh, thing is a s definition of success. Probably it's uh, because there are so many very successful and important small things that you'll never see in a magazine mm -hmm. that I have and that personally I feel that, that uh, very great success. So mm -hmm. this probably has something to do with uh, your personal uh, happiness <laughs> at yeah. the one or the other uh, moment or decade of your life. Okay. Yeah, but time, no, and the circumstances of, of of life also could feel it. Yeah, this is this is very important. And oh, but sometimes time, time destroys, and, uh, and there are so many projects that are published because they are a failure. So it's yeah, yeah, sure, for sure. <laughs> it's very interesting to. Uh... Uh, to listen to you and to learn from you. It, uh, it has been a pleasure to have you today with us. Uh, it has been also a pity that we are only online connected, but at the same time, a huge also opportunity because um, who knows, this also make, made it easier to connect and to connect with many more people. Um, we are very thankful for your participation and also to your team, uh, Yurate and Kate, for the help organizing. Um, also very thankful for our partners, Jung and Exterus, who are um, both active in Lithuania and Ukraine. And we were very excited and very happy to be able to share this evening together, hopefully in the future, in person. We'll just have that as a as a goal that will be nice and um i hope you enjoy it as well yeah, yeah. and thank you for for kim for being here yes the, uh, the magician, <laughs> the magician. Uh, magician. Yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you so too it's a pleasure thank you a lot uh it was super nice thank you also to the audience and the partners and also to the team behind thank you